Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Really hope you guys are doing well out there today. And I hope all of you guys have been able to sort of make your iPhone a 10s, 10R, and 10s Max purchases this year. Personally, I don't think I'll be updating my iPhone because uh, the iPhone 10 that I bought last year, which is right here, uh, it's working perfectly fine and all the bugs that I was experiencing earlier has been solved with the update of iOS 12. But uh, anyhow, let's kind of get to the main focus for today's video. And uh, what I really wanted to talk about is the update of Xcode 10 to the GM or Golden Master release. And then uh, with this release comes Swift 4.2. And a couple of new features of Swift 4.2 is the ability to generate random numbers rather easily and quickly by just making a random function call to classes such as ints, doubles, and floats. Uh, so what this really means is that we no longer have to make this strange function call to arc for random and all we gotta do is provide a range for this random function call. So in today's video, I kind of wanted to reinforce uh, how this function works by testing you guys on a specific algorithm that I want you guys to implement. So why don't we dive into this algorithm inside of Swift Playgrounds right now. Alrighty, so before we get into the main portion of today's video, I just wanted to quickly announce to you guys that we have a brand new course available on the website right now. And inside of this course, we are going to try to learn how to build out one of the more popular features that you'll find inside of iOS applications today. And that is the ability to kind of swipe left and right on the main screen of your application to reveal a menu, kind of like this on the left panel. Uh, inside of the left panel, we have a couple of different options kind of hidden away from your user, right? Let's say your user wants to go into the profile section of your application. Just simply click on the profile button and that's going to swap out the main controller of your application to kind of look like this, right? If you want to slide out the menu one more time, just click on the top left button over there and you'll see your menu again. Clicking on home will bring back the home controller just like so. Now, one of the highlights of this course is that we're going to support this entire feature through auto layout. And what that really means is that we're going to support both the portrait and landscape orientations of our application. So if you rotate it to a landscape like that, uh, it's just going to magically work. Now, let me kind of rotate this back to the portrait orientation. And the nice thing that comes along with the power of auto layout is that you can deploy the same exact code onto the iPad as well and the application is going to magically work. You can kind of see that I can swipe right and swipe left and that'll bring the menu back. You can rotate it back to the portrait orientation and everything is going to work out perfectly with the layout. All right, so that's kind of the quick mention for this course. If you want to impress your future employers or if you want to stand out amongst all of the iOS developers out there, uh, make sure to check out the course using the link down in the description below where you can also find all of the details and core concepts that we're going to go over inside of this course. And having said that, let's go ahead and get back into the video right now. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Xcode 10 here and I hope you guys are ready to kind of dive into a little bit of coding. Uh, the way we are going to start out today's video is to create a brand new uh, Playgrounds file, which is what you're seeing on the left side of your screen right over here. And uh, the version of Xcode that I am currently using is Xcode 10.0, as you can see right over there. Uh, there are a couple of new features of Playgrounds, which I'll show you as we code along here. Uh, but before we get into today's algorithm, I want to show you how to create some random numbers inside of the new uh, Swift 4.2 language right now. And so let's say you want to generate a new random integer, right? You can create a new variable over here and inside of the class of int, you can call this class function of random and all you have to do is to provide it with some kind of closed range over here. Now, uh, you might be asking what exactly is this closed range guy? Well, it's really hard to tell, but if you command click into the documentation, uh, it'll kind of tell you what you need to type right above over here. So the documentation tells you that it returns a random value with the specified range and you use this method to generate an integer with a specific range. And this is kind of the range that you need to type inside of your Swift syntax. And uh, this down here is a little bit of a quick example as to what it'll do. Okay, so make sure to read that over, but let me show you what the syntax needs to be instead of your playgrounds area. And let's say you want to generate a random number between zero and let's say 10. All you gotta do is type in the dot, 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 uh, hit the play over here. You should be able to get something on the right side. 
uh, hit the space, hit the play button again, you'll see seven. And I believe this generates a number all the way from zero to the value of 10 on the right side of your close range. Uh, you can see that a little bit more clearly if you use a smaller number there. So zero and three gives you one, gives you one, and hopefully I'll see a three over there. But uh, anyhow, this is kind of how you generate a random number. Now, another useful piece of syntax that you might want to use if you're using zero-based uh, array indices is to use the less than sign over here. So if you want to generate an index from zero to, let's say, the arrays count, you can just use this syntax over here. And if you hit the play button again, you'll get zero and one. So that's all of the numbers that you'll get. Uh, you're not going to get the two value over here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if you're not seeing this little bit of a blue arrow over here on the left side, you might want to change your playgrounds to manually run instead. If you have automatically run, it'll just uh, run every time you introduce new syntax, which isn't exactly what I like because I noticed in Xcode 9, the playgrounds keeps on crashing for no reason when you have that on. So I kind of like this uh, new addition where you have the automatic or you have the manual uh, option to run your playgrounds code. Okay, so that's how you generate a random integer. Uh, you can actually do the same thing by using a float and say random again. Uh, inside of here, you can say zero to let's say five like that. And this will generate you a random uh, float number between the values of zero and five. You can do the same thing for double. So double random gives you that. And you can do this for CG float as well. And I think there are a couple of other classes that you can generate random for, but these are just a couple of examples that I wanted to show you for today's video. Okay, so hopefully you get the idea behind generating a random number inside of Swift 4.2 now. So why don't we go ahead and dive into our algorithm for today. And uh, basically what I want you to be able to do is to somehow uh, take in an array, let's say a numbers array, and this guy will contain a random element of three, five, one, and two. So nothing special about these numbers over here, but I want you to write a function that is able to take in this array here and then shuffle all the elements around inside of this array, giving you a different permutation of the elements. So let's say one, three, five, and two. Uh, this is one of the possible permutations of this array right here with all the elements shuffled around. Another possible permutation is 3, 5, 2, and 1. Looks a little bit different compared to what we have in the original array. And uh, that's kind of the idea behind today's algorithm. Let me show you the function signature down here. This might make it a little bit easier to understand what I'm trying to get to. Uh, the function signature will be shuffled array. The first parameter, let's say nums, and this guy will be an integer array like that. Let's return, now let's see integer array as the return type. And inside of here is your custom code implementation that is going to shuffle this nums array around and then return some kind of new array. All right, hopefully this is uh, easy to understand, nothing too confusing just yet. And the funny thing is that it turns out in Swift 4.2, so Swift 4.2, there is already a function on uh, integer arrays or pretty much any type of array that allows you to shuffle the elements inside of it. And it's conveniently called shuffled, right? Uh, down here it says it returns the elements of the specified or of the sequence, but shuffled instead. If you click into that and try to print this guy out down at the very bottom here, let's click on the play you will see that you have uh, some fatal errors because some of the code up here isn't exactly what you need. So let's comment that out, run our code again. Uh, down here, we are generating the array of five, three, one, and two. So basically this array over here, but uh, some of the elements shuffled around. All right, so that's pretty good. And uh, let's say we don't have this convenient function available, right? How exactly do we go about implementing the custom logic that goes inside of this function here that you know does pretty much the same thing as this function below well let's kind of take a look at how we would uh, go about implementing this logic and it's a little bit tricky i have to admit if you haven't done something like this before uh, and the first thing you want to do is to kind of be able to loop through this numbers array obviously 
And instead of using a for each loop, I'm going to use a while loop like this. The way you uh, execute a while loop is to perform a condition check at the very start. I'm going to say while nums.count is greater than zero. And while it's actually, you know, nums.count, while this nums array is non empty, we're going to execute this loop. Uh, if you print out a statement instead of here, you'll notice that it's going to perform an infinite loop is what we call it. Hit the I over here, hit the play one more time. And let me see, nothing's going to happen because we haven't exactly invoked this function. So let's say a shuffle array. I will pass in the nums of three, five, one, and two, so numbers, and play. And you'll see that down here, you'll get this constant print statement. On the right side, it's just going to keep on executing this function. Uh, and it's executed 21,000 times on the right side, as you can see. And uh, that's pretty much the first step in implementing the logic inside of this function. I think there are a couple of different ways of doing this, but this is the best way that I've been able to come up with myself. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is to somehow exit outside of this while loop so that it doesn't perform this like infinite loop, right? Well, we are going to do that by, you know, reducing the number of elements inside of nums somehow. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is say nums, and you can call this remove function. Uh, you are allowed to remove any element inside of the nums, provided some kind of index inside of this parameter call. And it also returns you that specific object that you are removing. So I'm just going to uh, use the index value of zero. And let's say let removed item equals that. And uh, let's try to run our code again you will notice that this should not execute the uh, infinite loop anymore. I think it's going to freeze for a little bit here as it's trying to catch up with my logic. And there you go, sometimes uh, Playgrounds does crash, but this is a recoverable crash. Uh, all you have to do is look at this uh, error over here, and it says that you can mutate this nums array because it is a let constant, so this is a let constant parameter. Uh, the way you want to fix this is to introduce a mutable copy, so mutable copy of nums. And we're going to create a copy by just simply setting it equal to nums over here. And uh, this is just how Swift works. It creates a copy when you set it equal to an array like this. Uh, other languages are a little bit different, so make sure you are aware of that. And so instead of using nums here and here, let's just replace those two. And you'll see that the code looks fine. You have to play again. So after you execute this function, you get four print statements down here, right? If you modify your array by just a little bit, let's say three, five, one, two, and six, run your code again, you'll see this loop execute five times for each of the elements instead of your array over there. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. And uh, the only thing that we are kind of left to do here is to uh, append all of these removed items into a second array. So I'm going to create another array right here. I will call it shuffled array so far. And let's create an empty array of, let's see what I want to do here. Let's use integer array. This is a syntax to create a blank array. And uh, down here, you are going to append onto the shuffled array so far with append and let's pop in the removed item as we're removing it from the mutable copy over here. And uh, that looks pretty good. The code looks okay. I'm going to return the shoveled array all the way at the end of this function here. And so let's try to run this and see what this produces. So uh, shuffled array gives you three, five, one, and two, which is pretty much the same order for all the elements inside of the numbers array right now. And so obviously, that isn't exactly what we want. We want these elements to be shuffled around somehow, right? So the question is, how exactly do we perform this shuffling? Well, the way I'm going to do that is to go back into my while loop, and instead of using the array index of zero constantly, every time we're looping over, I'm going to generate a random index right above and uh, we're going to use the brand new syntax of int and provide random as our function call to the int class. And the only question remaining is what exactly is our closed range over here? Well, I'm going to use the syntax of zero dot dot less than, and we'll pop in the mutable copy of nums. 
and we're going to use the value of count here. Now it's very important to note that uh, the value of count is actually reducing every time you're removing an item out of the mutable copy over here. So this value decreases by one every time you are iterating over this while loop. And uh, that's kind of how the logic works here. Uh, random index, we're going to use this instead of the zero down below. And you can now finally run your function and you'll see that the elements inside of your array have been shuffled around a little bit. If you want to rerun this over here, you can just hit the play button. You'll see that instead of six, one, you'll get one, six, three, two, and five. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much how the logic inside of this shuffled array uh, function up above really works. Uh, it's pretty simple. You have to kind of think about the logic behind this while loop for a little bit before you truly understand what's going on. And let's see, one more thing that I would like to show you before I leave you for today is uh, how you can actually improve this shuffled array function so that it can handle perhaps uh, some different element types inside of the array. So let's say for numbers, instead of using an integer array, let's say 1.1, 2.0, or 3.3, .3 and 2.5 or 2.6, right? Well, when you modify this array right here, it doesn't exactly allow you to pass in double or float types because uh, the shuffle array signature only allows integer types for the numbers array. And uh, one way you can fix this is to use a double or a float. Uh, you're gonna have to replace this over here on the right side as well. And also the blank array that you're creating, you want to modify the type to be a double. And uh, once you do that, you'll see that it shuffles the array correctly, right? 1.2, 2.6, and 3.3. And now what you are going to ask is, well, what if I pop in some strings over here? So let's say Bob, and let's say Dave, and let's say Mary is a good name. And if you try to run this again, it's not going to allow you to do that because uh, you can't really convert these strings to the double that it's expecting instead of the array call, or the uh, shuffled array call, rather. And the way you would go about fixing this is to apply some generics to this function over here. And the, the reason why you would use generics is because the logic inside of this function isn't exactly tied down to the type of your array. You can apply this logic to anything pretty much. And so the way you would do this is to use the generic syntax of let's say T for the type, pop in the T there and try to pop in the T there. And you'll notice that the code is kind of okay, but it's not exactly going to run because the T type is undeclared. And the last thing you have to do is to pop in the T in front of the shuffled array method call. And once you do that, you can run your function again. And over here, you'll see that you're going to shuffle this element of, or all of these elements inside of the string array to produce Mary, Dave, and Bob. So this is very helpful for you guys that are trying to reduce the amount of code inside of your projects. Uh, make sure to use the uh, power of generics to you know, kind of reduce your code duplication. And so to end the lesson for today's video, I would like to have you guys out there create an application that's gonna help you reinforce the idea of generating this random integer. And that application is this right over here. And uh, basically I'm using a UI page view controller that is able to generate these couple of prizes for prize three, four, and five, and it's going up in a sequential order, right? Well, the challenge for today is to generate this exact same application and have this button down here that says random, and every time you press on it, it goes to a random page inside of your application. And so that's basically the idea behind today's challenge. If you wanna receive the solution to this project, make sure to turn on your email notifications by signing onto the website. That's going to be it for me today. Keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye-bye.